Thank you very, very much. You know, uh, we are here because justice demands that we be here. We could be doing a lot of other things, but justice calls us to this place at this time. What is the First Amendment anyway? After the original Constitution of 1787, there was an uprising of the people because the original Constitution did not include the people. And those first 10 amendments are the people's amendments to the Constitution. The first of those amendments is the amendment protecting freedom of speech. Without that amendment, and I say this to everyone, to the women, to the African Americans on the police force, you should know that without the First Amendment, you would have not had the Civil Rights Movement. And without the Civil Rights Movement, you would not have had black folk and women on the police department. So when we stand up, believe me, we're standing up for you as well. Mumia Abu-Jamal is not a cop killer. No, he's not. No, he's not. He is not a killer of anybody. Mumia Abu-Jamal was targeted right. because he is a freedom fighter. That's right. I had the opportunity last year to visit Mumia. Mm -hmm. Pam Africa took me up there. In case you didn't know, Mumi and I are from the same neighborhood, right. the Tenderline of North Philadelphia. <laughs> and when I was going up there, I said, Pam, Mumi is not going to recognize me. It's been too long. She said, yes, he will. And he did recognize me. And we talked for about five hours. And one of the questions I asked Mumia, not like everybody, to hear this. I said, Mumia, how did you survive 30 years in solitary confinement? A superhuman feat. A superhuman feat. They wanted him to die. They wanted him to go mentally insane. And I asked him, how did you survive, Mumia? And he answered very simply. He said, because I knew I was loved. And on this day, we are sending love to Mumia. That's right. That's right. Another great Philadelphian, John Coltrane, also from North Philly, 12th and Master, wrote a profound suite to humanity entitled, A Love Supreme. I like, turn it up, man. I like to refer to it as a love sublime, an all-embracing love for humanity. I know Pam said some of the brothers and sisters out here were looking at us like they wanted to kill us. And maybe there are some people on the other side that would prefer that we would die. But let's be real. We ain't going nowhere. That's right. That's right. Because we're inspired by love sublime. We're inspired by what Mumia said kept him alive. I knew I was loved. Governor Corbett, this cheap campaign thing that you put on here today is not going to get you reelected. No no right. no right. You're not going to be reelected. Right. Don't try to go to law and order now. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't go to law and order now that you have cut funding for public education. Last week I marched with the teachers. 5,000 of them marched with parents, with students, with other unionists. And what were we marching for? A simple thing, the right to be educated, a human right, a love sublime. This movement is about love, brothers and sisters. It's not about hurting anybody. When we stand up for the First Amendment, we're standing up for the best in this country. We are the ones.
not Governor Corbett. Come right. on, dog. Right. You know you're out of order. Right. And I would say to all of my sisters and brothers, whatever color you are, you're going to have to get on the right side of history. And, you know, if, you, if you're on the internet, let me tell you about one thing. Martin Luther King, go to YouTube. Martin Luther King gave a great, great sermon. It was one of the most delivered sermons in his life. And it's called Three Dimensions of a Complete Life. Look it up. Three Dimensions of a Complete Life. The first dimension of a complete life is a long life. We all want to live a long life. The second dimension of a complete life is service to humanity. But the third dimension of a complete life is what Dr. Martin Luther King called a cosmic partnership, that we are all wrapped in a single garment of destiny. And what affects one directly affects us all indirectly. Listen to Martin Luther King. You shut Mumia down. What affects one of us indirectly affects all of us. Affects all of us. It's inescapable. It is inescapable. You want to be a police officer, be that. But do it right. You want to be a DA, Lynn Abrahams. You want to be mayor now. Be, do it right. Criminal. Learn from the great Martin Luther King. Learn from the great James Baldwin, who reminded us that if you attack the black people, if you kill black young men and women in the streets, what makes you think that your son or daughter is safe? That's the contradiction that we're faced with. The contradiction that it is we who marched in the streets back in the 60s for the reason for black men and women and women on the police force. In 1981, when Officer Faulkner was killed right here, not by Mumia. There wasn't no black people on the police force to, to mention. We could not have even imagined Commander Ramsey being the chief of police. The police force in Philadelphia was a version of the Ku Klux Klan. Still is. Still is. Still is. Well, <laughs> but I, I can say this, and I want to stop. I've spoken too long. We're fighting for unity. We're fighting for justice. That's right. That's right. That bill that that Governor Corbett signed today it will not stand. He knows it won't. It's a cheap campaign trip. That's right. It's But what it does is draws attention of the world to what political opportunist will do to be reelected. That's right. That's right. They will tear the Constitution up in our faces. And if you don't have the First Amendment, let me say this, you don't have the 14th Amendment. That's right. And if you don't have the 14th Amendment, you don't have civil rights for anybody. Teach, teach. You don't have the 14th Amendment. Mm -hmm. And notice, we're talking about amendments. Mm -hmm. You had to amend the Constitution to make it worth anything. Mm -hmm. The Constitution as originally drawn up wasn't worth a dime, wasn't worth the paper it was written upon. You had to amend it. The 14th Amendment is the amendment that gives us civil rights. But without the first, you don't get the 14th. And without the fourth, you don't get the protection of habeas corpus. This is what we're talking about. I'm gonna end on this. <laughs> Let me say this. In the early 1930s in Germany, there were a small group of people, mainly underground, who saw the danger that the Nazi party 
the stormtroopers and Hitler represented to the people of Germany. There was a pastor who said, first they came for the socialists and I was not a socialist so I didn't say anything. Then they came for the trade unionists, and since I wasn't a trade unionist, I didn't say anything. Right. Then they came for the communists, and since I wasn't a communist, I didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. Then they came for the Jews, and since I was a, wasn't a Jew, I didn't say anything. And then they came for me, mm -hmm. and since I didn't speak up for the others, there was no one left to speak up for me. Let us not wait until it's too late. Let us act now. Thank you very much.